Welcome, everyone. This is May 22nd, 2024. It's the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Thanks for joining. Topics for today. Uh, recent LTS released. Uh, Jenkins will require Java 17 in less than a month. Uh, Jenkins IO improvements were one that I put on the list. If Jan's not here, I think we'll we'll drop that one. And we had done demo of recent work in the past that if Jan's not here, I don't have anything to demo. And then discussion of UI improvements. What other topics do we need to be sure we add to the list? Tim, were there any particular topics that you wanted to be sure we touched? Uh, no, no, I've just been trying to test some of Jan's changes. Okay, so that we'll touch on, I think, in the active work. I may have missed some of the items in the active work, so we'll when we get to that, we'll we'll touch on it. And and if I miss something, I, I'll rely on you to let me know. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. All right. Um, Bruno and Antoine, I'm going to assume that you'll speak up if there's some other topic you'd like to cover. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Great. Yeah, sure. Super. Thanks. So on the on the plus side, we just released the next LTS. We've got twelve weeks of of LTSs coming now. So so we'll for about four weeks from now, we'll bring out an or three weeks from now, we'll bring out another the dot two and then the dot three and then the next. That leads us to the next topic, and it's good that Tim's here because as release officer, I'm relying on his of all, a give having given approval to a, change, a slight change in how we're going to do the LTS baseline selection for the next release. So we are going to release June 18 with Java 17 as the required minimum version for Jenkins. We need that because of the spring, spring security upgrade. However, that's about two weeks prior to our choosing the baseline for the next LTS. And the next LTS must still support Java 11. So when we do this, we won't choose this release as the next LTS baseline. Tim, did I say it? Did I say it well enough? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a big post. There's a post on the mailing list anyway. I think everyone seems to be on board with that. Good, right? Yeah, see the mailing list for for the discussion of the the effort, and on we go. Great. All right, so next was we got an open PR from Yond for dark mode on Jenkins.io. Now, I needed some additional help to understand how to test it. And there's still some, some ongoing discussion about probable changes that will need it in the top level site and in, or in, the, in the toolbars that we use that we share across multiple sites. And some of the sites like the account app uh, may need additional changes. So more changes needed, but I think it's elegant that we've got somebody thinking about how to make our documentation available in dark mode. Uh -huh. Yeah, let me have a look. And I'm going to need some tutoring, somebody who can teach me how to get my browser to go into dark mode when looking at a website. I know I do it with Jenkins all the time. I run with Jenkins, but for whatever reason, I've not found the magic to test the pull request. That's that's not a topic for this meeting. Since we don't have Jan today, I'm going to skip the demo of recent work and let's go to the talking about recent improvements. So we've got header parts are now a tag library so that it's easier to maintain headers in this case for the customizable Jenkins header plugin was the first target. And we had a number of bug fixes that arrived in 2.459. Uh, we're, we're, it feels like 2.459 is in good shape that way. Now, Tim, the next topic was active work. Is there any one of these that you'd like to highlight first or that you want me to open up first for, for a particular discussion? Rewrite the build history widget or something different? Yeah, I mean, I think the build history widget is pretty close. Uh, the only, <clears throat> only functional issue I saw was the... Uh, empty state is showing the pagination errors when it shouldn't be. 
So if you don't have any builds, it's showing pagination errors when as soon as you click one build, they disappear. Um, and that's just because it starts with them and then it hides them when it updates, but it doesn't do an update when there's nothing. Okay, so uh, the... oh, go ahead. No, so that's, and then there's a couple of fixes, an accessibility issue and uh, yeah, just some minor, minor, very, very minor things like uh, I, I, fi I fixed a functional issue where the bounce wasn't implemented properly and it was taking too long. Uh, I pushed that about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, and I, I had seen your comment on the bounce thing. I was particularly interested there. So it seemed to just take three to five seconds and then it would run it. So maybe when you call to bounce without invoking it properly, it doesn't, uh, it eventually runs it. I don't, I don't know. Mm, but okay. It's basically to bounce wraps the function and you need to call the function. Probably could have done it by just adding some brackets on the end as well. But I uh, we just did it like in the documentation and how we've done it in the plugin manager UI. And as soon as I did that, it fixed it. And then I sped it up a little bit because it seemed it was a little bit, it was noticeably slow and it didn't need to be. And I set it to the same time as we already used in plugin manager. Okay, so there there was already a bounce a debounce function in the plugin manager, and you've made this consi more consistent with that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's consistent with that, and it's Excellent. working nicely. Good. All right. So so this was discussed here on community.jenkins.io, and now we're seeing an implementation. That's great. Are there, are there things that you would like to ask for help from others evaluating, Tim? Any any topics where you say, hey, could we assess this or this in addition to what you've already done? Uh, I don't think so. I think others have already looked at things like badges and crazy descriptions. I might have a quick look at it, but from a basic point of view, it's looking good. There's probably some edge cases from some plugins, but uh, for the general use case, it's looking really good. Great. Uh, so, I think, go ahead. Yeah, I think I think it's just from my point of view, it's very 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 minor things left. Thank you. All right. So so now is a, a really good time for others to get involved in testing it and looking for any oh any surprises that others might not have detected. It has already passed ATH, so mm -hmm. that's that's really good. And yep. security's already approved it. So there's conceptually we could be not far from this thing being approved and merged yeah it could, it could potentially be in the next weekly right all right thank you do others have any questions on the rewrite of the build history widget all right is there a next one that tim you think should we take improved plugin manager search next or no i haven't had time to look at oh, the okay so that's comments the... on that okay uh the add download option is oh let me get that one okay I merged think... that's All that's right. the move console output to app bar oh oh meaning i've already got it i see yeah. okay so this one was already merged and it's no in... i mer no i merged it just then okay N arrives next week mm -hmm. all right great thank you i think let me just check 9137 i think uh yeah Dan yeah the pipeline search one daniel found some something a little bit off in the waitings on something um mm -hmm. it's quite fiddly to get right there but mm-hmm the general case seemed to be improved, but I will, yeah, I seem to find some time to have a look at that. But okay. I haven't had a chance. No, and this one, I think I'd seen some traffic on more flexible layouts recently. Uh, oh, you tell me which ones you'd like to, if there are any additionally you'd like to discuss. So that one, I think, needs the design light, needs a consumer. Um, so it's, there's a PR to document it, but nothing's actually using it. Oh. Um, so Jan said he's going to update the design library to update it, um, and then we can evaluate it properly. All right, good. So once once we have uh, a consumer, very good. All right. Yeah, nine one two six. I may or may not get back to it. 
Uh, and I can I can also bring up the uh, open pull request if that would help. Mm -hmm. So here, let's take a look at these. And if I remember right, we generally label <laughs> with is it web UI? Mm -hmm. So are are there any uh, of these? Command palette is fairly close, I would say. Okay, command palette. Which one is that? If you do sort by recently updated, that will be. Give oh, you... oh, good. Okay, let's do that. Sort by recently updated. Oh, okay. Overhaul search with a command palette. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> good. All right. So let me put that one into our notes, and you can talk further about it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll let you open it up. Um, ah, okay, so... good. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so that's, yeah. So this is the thing where the search bar turns into a command palette, it pops out, and in the future, be enhanced, uh, be a bit more powerful, and to be able to do more things like toggling dark mode and... Um, have like icons and the results and be a bit more contextual uh, but at the moment it's just basic basic version turning into a spotlight effect uh, so that sort of seems to be working really well uh, I think I did a bit of uh, and so this this one the this is a major change in terms of the the experience because I'm used to the that search bar stays in the top right hand corner and never never moves and never retain never highlights itself like this. So this looks really elegant. Yep. Um so I, I did some fixes yesterday on making it work with the custom header plugin. I think Daniel had raised that uh there were some attributes added on elements of the header that would be replaced by the custom header plugin. So I um, so that taglib change was timely. Um, mm -hmm. I fixed up the P I fixed up Marcus's PR to because I think there's a couple of things that were missing a little bit, uh, and then uh, adapted the command palette PR to move those attributes into parts that aren't being replaced by the plugin. Uh, so it's all compatible with custom header now, without having to change it, which is nice. Uh, That's the great. the only issue that I could see is that um the HTML unit tests are failing. I think Jan has a PR to the uh, uh Jenkins test harness, but I don't think it's working right. Um, and is is that an HTML unit failure due to? I know we've seen HTML unit failures in the past where. It was a problem that the JavaScript supported by HTML unit was just not good enough for the tests, the tests we were running. Is that this kind of thing as well? Or no, it's something simpler. I don't know yet. Ah, okay. All right. I haven't looked hugely into it given Jan's got a PR there to do something, but when I was running the tests, it just wasn't working. <laughs> uh, and they're not working on CI Jenkins IO either. So um I hope hopefully depending so i think functionally this looked fine to me if tests were passing i would approve it but i think this is going to need uh yeah the, the build fixing ach and then maybe pct just in case right okay so so there's plenty yet to do on this in terms of the safety measure before it moves yeah it says here needs ath build needs to okay good so the, yeah, the labels but apart are... from yeah apart from that this functionally looks good like Great. all my testing was fine on it once I fixed a couple of minor things. Great. All right. And now if I do this right again, it was web UI and sort by recent update. There. Any others that you want to highlight? Uh does display how many users there are on the users page. Okay. So I'm trying to, so, oh, oh, it's that digit two next to mm -hmm. the users. I see. Okay. 
Yeah, it adds, it adds a subtitle to the app bar so that pages can add a little bit more information. Uh, so that needs review. I, um, there's a PR to design library with information. Okay, and so just need others to review that. So display number of users. Okay, and that you said what the the crucial thing there is needs more review mm -hmm. and needs design library consumption. So it needs design library as a consumer. No, no, no. no that it's it's consumed on the users page. So that's fine. Ah, uh, oh, okay. just needs more reviews. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. And then there's um fixed weather icons is probably the other one, the it's... second one from the top. Ah, okay, good. All right. I think that just needs testing across browsers. Oh, oh, okay. This one was, th I remember this one. Okay, I fix is, is a little too generic for my poor memory. This one is that stroke widths were wrong when you were doing increasing window sizes or some such thing? Uh, yeah, if you zoomed, the right. um, circles would move apart from each other. Right. They, they, the, the, the symbol would fracture, right? It would become, it would become imperfect at... And it was specific to certain browsers. And your point there is we don't want it to break firing, on another browser. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and, and Daniel's asked for that. Okay, hey, we need to see it on, it really needs to be tested on supported browsers so we don't break some other browser with this change. Good. Yeah. All but right. Apart, apart from that, that will ship as soon as someone tests across all the browsers. Yeah, so with with whether our icon positioning at non default magnification. I am so broken. Sorry. Just a minute. No, I got the wrong one cut. Okay. Any others that you'd like to highlight, Tim? No, I think that's it. All right. Any other topics from others in the in the call? Thanks very much. Then I'll, well, let's pause it. We'll stop the recording. Recording will be available in about 24 hours.